Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, and I'm the editor of JAC, the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. I'd like to introduce you to this initial segment of the genuine article. I'll be doing these pieces for CVN from time to time, and I intend to discuss some of the most exciting papers that we've published in JAC, as well as perhaps a, a thought or two that come from my editor's pages uh, as many of you know, those editors' pages don't necessarily always deal with cardiologic issues. In any event, uh, it's, it's a unique opportunity for me to bring to you some of the things I think are important from Jack, and I look forward to sharing these times with you. Now, to begin with, I'd like to tell you about a very interesting paper that's in our most recent issue of Jack. And it's from a group of investigators in Japan who aim to study the question of whether angiography could, in point of fact, be accurate enough to indicate the site of a vulnerable or a ruptured or culprit plaque in the setting of acute myocardial infarction associated with total coronary occlusion. And we all see patients frequently with acute MI taken to the emergency room with a total occlusion. And the question really is, does the initiation of that occlusion really identify the location of the plaque that was the culprit? And to answer this question, these investigators use both thermography, looking for differences in temperature, and IVUS, looking for imaging evidence of, of plaque rupture or instability. And as you know, in the setting of inflammation, white blood cells raise the temperature of plaques, indicating that, in fact, they've been involved with some kind of an event. And IVUS has a number of characteristics, uh, uh, including a large necrotic core that indicate uh, culprit plaques. The interesting findings of this study were that, in fact, angiography was of very little value in identifying the site of the culprit plaque in the setting of a total obstruction. In fact, what these investigators found was that the culprit plaque was usually located some eight or nine millimeters distal in the occluded vessel than the point of actual blood flow obstruction. Now, that's not surprising since we know that thrombus propagates uh, uh, proximally, but nevertheless, it, it does point out the weakness of angiography in this regard. Now, for me and for the other editors of Jack, what was perhaps equally interesting about this paper was that the point of maximal temperature indicating the culprit plaque was virtually identical or closely correlated to the point where IVUS indicated that a ruptured plaque had occurred. And so for the first time, we had some cross-validation between invasive techniques that are attempted to be used to identify culprit plaque. That is to say, both the sense of heat and the IVUS imaging showed that the culprit plaque was in the same location, therefore validating each other. So that what we take away from this study is, again, that angiography is somewhat limited in recognizing these plaques, but that IVUS and thermography identifying temperature changes really can be of value. So we have some good evidence that we can use these techniques in moving forward in trying to identify these high-risk plaques, particularly in trying to identify them before they rupture, uh, before they erode, and lead to myocardial infarction. I hope you enjoyed this segment. And I look forward to presenting more of our most interesting papers to you in the near future.